Hello and welcome back to coverage of the PDGA Euro Tour. This is the first stop the Pro Forester Tournament at Lagoda Disc Golf Course in Varaždin, Croatia. We are happy to be bringing you FPO lead card coverage. This is Round 2 Front 9, brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood, and with me Elias Lukanen. Hello guys, I'm excited to watch this Round 2 Front 9 coverage, where these players are going to put themselves into the position for the final round. We have starting our card Mariana Must representing Estonia. She set the hot pace in round one, likely continuing in round two. Also, Katka Borova from uh, Slovakia. Solid left handed player, good power and uh, an aggressive putting style. Continuing on the lead card from the feature, Nikola Moravkova, 895 rated, had a well rounded game, good at hitting her lines and strong on the green. And rounding out the card, Birgit Wieder, rating 850, from also from Estonia. Nice to see a couple of uh, Estonian players on the card. And she is sponsored by Clash Discs. As we have a nice variety here of nationalities, manufacturers, strong playing field. We look at the top 10 scores, Mariana Must leading at even, Katka one stroke behind her, Nikola three strokes behind Katka, and Birgit one stroke behind Nikola. Still a tight battle with 36 holes left to go. We start here on hole one, par four, 165 meters. These players will have a hyzer for the right-handed backhand thrower, trying to push this rightwards tree line. You want to position yourself as best as possible to enter this tunnel on your second shot. A placement anywhere near this mouth offering a straight shot is a great throw, as you then try to fight through this last tunnel and up to the green. An attackable birdie but requires good placement on the first and then precision on the second. Yeah, and it's uh, certainly one of the rare, more rarely bogeyed holes on the course, since it uh, it is the second easiest hole on the course. Not many bogeys and these players are looking forward to getting their drive up the fairway and to the left to hopefully set up their second shot for the easy birdie. Let's see, Marian uh, with the left hand going with a turnover shot with a driver of sorts, very understable disc, finding herself on the left side of the fairway, but even though that's not a super long drive, it is in good position to get the approach for the birdie. And another left-handed player here, Katka, shaping the Anheuser, gets a little bit more of a flex shape towards the end of the flight, as she'll have a shorter shot to the green, likely just as straight as Mariana as well. You want to hug as far to the left side fairway as you can without going OB on the road left, although that's very difficult to find. You want to finish significantly towards the left side of the fairway. This as looks like a great Nicola shot. is doing here. And um, for the right-handed player, it is much more of a simple hyzer compared to the left-handed turnover shot. You really just have to take a fast and stable disc and push it towards the right side trees and hopefully fade well before them towards the left side of the fairway, as we mentioned. Birgit, unfortunately, looking f to go towards the trees, but fades just in time. And that's in prime pos position right there in the middle of the fairway and good distance. And you saw she had to push that right side tree line as close as possible to push both the distance and placement. As we see Katka up first on the approach, she hyzes out a touch early, but likely an obstructed circle to a birdie putt. We see Nicola now with a straight look. You can see Nicola being on the left side of the fairway, having a great angle to approach the green. Unfortunately, turns turns his uh, her approach just slightly over, but she'll have a circle to look for the birdie there. Birgit here going for that forehand hyzer. She crashes into the green, settles nicely at the edge of the rough inside the circle for her birdie. She's well positioned. Really showing off that uh, common Estonian forehand that... Uh, Seems like many Estonian players have the same capabilities with the forehand. Marianne with a great touch, going with the slow disc, slight Anheuser release and settling just outside the 3 meter bullseye mark. That's a great shot. 
Nicola with the long bid from circle two, perhaps just outside, just off the cage. And Katka, unfortunately, even though she's well inside circle two, having to go with the forehand pitch, puts it under the basket and no harm, no harm done there. As Birgit is looking forward to making possibly the birdie putt, unfortunately, just coming up low left on the release. A little bit tentative there as Mariana skims around the outside, does the little dance with her disc, but secures the birdie here on hole one, showing us why she's our leader coming into the round. Yeah, that's uh, certainly not the best putt, but good enough. And I feel like just barely making a putt on hole one can kind of wake you up to the, to the round, you know. You made it, so no damage done, but uh, you get that extra bit of focus, like, hey, let's put the next one in the middle. Could have slipped through with a few centimeters difference. She'll be happy to find that early birdie as the other three competitors find par. We move on here to hole two. Par four at 125 meters. You have this initial gap to hit before breaking out into the more open fairway. You still have some considerable guardian trees to navigate through, a lot of players will shape a soft flex to make the gap feel slightly wider. As you enter the green, you have another very tight gap about 110 meters down the fairway with a slightly sloping descended green. You want to try and pierce through and find your birdie. One of the easier holes considering the short distance at par four. Yeah, very true. It's actually the sixth most, sixth easiest hole on the course. So this player is certainly looking forward to getting the birdie. Marianne with a bit of a hyzer release, hyzering towards the right side of the fairway, although I would guess that's not much of a problem since she can shape the left-hand hyzer into the green from there. Katka pushing the turn a little bit more, finds one of those early trees and kicks considerably behind some guardians. I think likely playing for par, but could still manufacture a good second shot to fight her way to the green. This is Nicola now. Under turning a little bit as she fades out to the left, but well positioned, wide open to still enter that second and final gap towards the green. Yeah, on this hole, if you just make the first gap and uh, get somewhere into the big open field, you really have a good chance for the birdie. Unfortunately for Birgit, she turns it over a bit too much and goes into the bushes on the right side. We'll see whether she has a shot at the basket from there or not. Kot's got trying to crash through the left side left side trees on the left side of the of the gap to the green and looks like she has a circle to look but very abstracted and birgit once again leaning on the power forehand opting for the standstill there awkwardly straddled fights her way up to the basket really nice shot from a awkward stance and nicola being very far left of the gap and actually ends up going with an Anheuser forehand to shape it better through the gap and continue forward towards the basket. Unfortunately, just hitting a guardian tree at the end, but uh, she'll have a chance for the birdie there. And Marianne, with an incredible touch forehand Anheuser approach, really showing off that diverse, um, diverse shot selection that she has. And I think that's the skill set that's needed to compete at the top as the scene develops globally. A lot of these players are coming into these European tour events with a strong, well-rounded game, backhand, forehand, putting on the green, well put together as they compete at the biggest stage in Europe. Very true and especially important on this course that has a lot of wooded fairways. Unfortunately, Birgit unable to cash it in for the birdie there. Looking forward to putting it in from five meters for par does it we saw a couple of layups from inside circle two from these players as well it's really a often part hole you know there's not huge trouble to find yourself into and even if you do it's uh likely only punishes you with one stroke and mariana with the great birdie there another putt that looks slightly uh tentative as she finds i think weak side and swings it around another one that she puts in Still a good birdie. Doesn't say how it goes in on the scorecard. What matters is that she secures it. Two great throws. I think as the round goes on, she'll find her putting stroke a little bit early on on the tournaments, especially on lead card. It can be tough to find your rhythm, but she's two through two. 
a great start for the yeah. leader. And you, you really could see that uh, she herself also noticed that there was something off with the putt and I'm sure she's gonna put extra effort into the next ones. And we'll see if she can find that here. Hole 3 is a par 5 sitting at 252 meters. Players will need a big drive, potentially two, off this tee to a hazard dividing the fairway at roughly 162 meters, where you then want to throw over the OB area, hazard area, into this teardrop green to try and secure your birdie. I think if you have a big distance off the first shot, it's likely a short pitch up on the second, unless you really want to get aggressive and push all the way to the island on your second shot. A lot of these players will have two drives on a forgiving fairway and then battle over the Hazard River. Yeah, very true. And forgiving is a good way to call this fairway because it is very wide, at least 30 to 40 meters in width. And uh, these players are just going to take their slightly understable distance drivers and hopefully try to keep it in the middle of the fairway and get some good distance as well, as we saw by both Marian and Katka. Nicola now playing a little bit more of the overstability, shapes a soft Anheuser out of the hand but fades back into the fairway nicely. She'll be left with about 60 meters to that hazard line. Yeah, that's a solid shot then. The first shot here is not really the most important one as long as you keep it in play. Uh, the second shot that is tried to be placed um, just short of the hazard is really the most important one. You want to push it as close to the hazard as possible without hopefully still going into the hazard and getting that extra stroke. Birgit now trying to push that line as you mentioned. Looking to push as much distance as possible to try and cross over into the island. We see Marianne now getting it very close to the hazard line but not in the hazard area. That's a perfect shot there, setting up for a, about a 100 meter approach to the baskets. Here is Katka's layup with some good distance off the tee. She's positioning herself now to cross into that island. Likely shaping a soft flex, a big hyzer if you have the power, but I think still about 100 to 120 meters to the basket. Yeah, she looks to shape this. Even to the front side of the island, there is a, as she goes, unfortunately, to the hazard there. Even to the front side of the inbounds island, it is about 70 to 80 meters from here. And uh, on the on the shorter side, it's significantly um, it's significantly tighter as far as the hazard lines. But that's a good shot there, and um, she'll have just uh, 20 meters or less less left for the for the birdie. Definitely, this hole rewards distance on the attacking shot to the island, as it does widen towards the basket. Anything that comes up short will need to be considerably more precise. Very true, and we saw Birgit landing inside the island, and Marian unfortunately just fading out to the right, and I think she might have found the hazard there. Looking to still save par, we see Katka now also from this hazard area, looking to put this one close. Does that nicely. Uh, one thing that maybe makes this very difficult hole just a little bit easier is the fact that there is not super many skips on the green the grass is very thick and um, it has been raining for some time before the tournament so the ground is very soft so these runs from uh, deep circle two can be really aggressive without big fear of um, having a long comebacker as nicola once again looking like a circle two bid just finding metal a bit low she has a great line just needs to make a small adjustment to the height to be translating these putts as we see Mariana give it a bid from just outside the island, still left with a comebacker here from about six meters. Right That's in the heart. a great putt there. Really fixing those uh, issues on the last two putts and putting it confidently in the middle. You could really see that extra, extra consciousness there on the comebacker putt. And it's great to see Birgit now walking towards her putt, making sure to put that one in for par. This is a hole that is very common to take one penalty stroke on given the large amount of hazard. If you can have clean shots, it's definitely birdieable for the field, but requires, of course, no penalty strokes and a clean game. As we see two bogeys and two pars, not a particularly uncommon score, even for those upper cards. 
Yeah, that's true. Very average score as far as the field, because the hole is averaging five point, uh, uh, sorry, 0 0.56 strokes over par, so one of the more difficult holes. But they move on to hole four. A 114 meter par three, this hole offers two potential lines. As the drone flies, the straight gap between these two large trees and eventually batting, battling this last one towards the green, or the wide swinging hyzer over the right side, requiring more distance on that one angle shot, but playing considerably safer and with less obstacles. Yeah, as we have two lefties on the card, and looks like Nicolas also going with the forehand, I would expect a lot of left to right moving shots down this left alleyway. And Nicola with a powerful forehand, keeping it very low, getting a bit of a skip at the end, and she's still considerably, considerably short for the birdie, but uh, at least an easy par there. Birgit playing that wider hyzer as she's looking to push this one as far as possible. Comes up a little bit short of the green, but tough to push the distance on one angle. She'll have a short approach, maybe a long putt. Yeah, and um, this hole is very commonly parred among the among the players, among the field. So if you can get the birdie on this one, you're definitely taking strokes. As Mariani goes with the powerful left-handed hyzer to flip up shot, she's inside the circle there. That's a really great shot showing off that long distance she has. And Katka, unfortunately, hitting the, hitting the main tree to miss on the fairway. But shaping a soft hyzer up to the green just outside Bullseye, she will have a short putt for her par save. We see Birgit now from her hyzer. She's left with about 50 meters to the pin. She's going to be playing a forehand approach here, trying to beat this very last tree. Actually just kisses off it. She'll be left with six meters for her par as well. Yeah, you can see her really relying on that forehand. It's it's looking good so far. Nicola just laying up under the basket, getting the stress-free par. There's really no losing with the par, but let's see if Mariana can actually get the birdie here. Only five and a half meters away and a powerful putt to the top right corner of the basket and drops in. That's an incredible birdie right there. Definitely more confident on the putting stroke. Gave it the height. Very centered on the pole. Good to see that slight adjustment happen here on hole four. As we see Birgit now trying to find her stance. She drops to the knee actually, opting to not have that awkward hunched stance. She's going to be finding this for par, hopefully. Yeah, and it's uh, even though it is one of the more open greens on the course, even on this green, it is possible to find some obstacles i would say no hole here at lagoda disc golf course is free of obstacles yeah that's very true it's certainly mostly a course full of obstacles even though we haven't quite seen the worst teeth of the course yet but um as we move on from this hole four with uh, three pars and one birdie that's a great score for the group Welcome player, commencing disc selection. Choose your driver. The Kotari. Choose your approach. The Kia. Choose your putter. The Tui. Selection complete. And now the course changes a little bit as we begin to enter the woods. You see here hole 5. Par 4, 203 meters, you have an extremely tight tunnel shot off the tee that does not offer any significant width to play with. You need a long straight pushing shot ending just before this small trench. You then enter the second leg of the fairway with very thick rough to the left and the right. You battle your way up to this well protected green with trees on all sides. A very difficult hole to birdie and a par is a fine score even feeling often like you've played a great line and good throws on this. Very true and uh, absolutely the most important thing on this hole is to stay in the fairway. Any distance off the tee is good if you're on the fairway. Looks like Marianne is uh, 
almost throwing the perfect shot, but just barely pushing it to the right side of the gap. The gap you see right here is about 50 meters away from the tee, and it's not a very wide gap as uh, as is common on this course, especially since we enter these woods. Birgit now shaping really nicely through the gap. She has this fade out into the open side that will open up her entrance to the second half of the fairway. Well-placed shot, clean the whole way, gets a full flight. That was perfect, and uh, especially finishing left of the initial gap, opening up that angle for the second shot to give herself more opportunities. And Katka also hitting the right side of the gap. Um, it's a very common place to land. The gap is very tight. With an awkward stance, gets a lot of power to that shot and just perfect position. That was a great and athletic shot there. As we see, I believe Marianna there scrambling her way up the fairway as well. Nicola left with a similarly awkward stance. She tries to progress as far as possible and all of them advance to try now to cross over the trench towards the green. Although still about 120 meters out, this is a long straight shot. You can play over the bushes if you want to increase the risk but potential reward. As we see Birgit there overturn into the rough, she will need to continue scrambling now. Yeah, unfortunately not taking advantage of that great drive she had. But that's a, that's a really good hyzer shot there from Marianne. Putting herself into position to hopefully get the five on this hole. This is the most difficult hole on the course, playing over one and a half strokes above par. So taking a five here is uh, still better than the field average. As Katka puts it to the middle of the fairway, just 30 meters left to the basket. Nicola now playing a high flex line. She catches some of those early branches and loses the integrity of her shape. Finding some rough again. We see Birgit now, I think, likely just pitching out given that she has so little to work with there. You see her even finding some more troubles as she'll still have to battle her way out. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but uh, it's a very common thing on this course. If you're in the rough, you quite often don't really have any other option but to just pitch out sideways to the fairway. But a good scramble forehand from there giving herself a long look at possibly saving the fire, but uh, at least securing the six. Nicola going for a big spike hyzer forehand just before the mouth of the green. She'll have a look at a putt, and she's shown to be fairly comfortable from that range. I think definitely still a chance to put that one in. This is Marianna now looking to hyzer in before the rough. Really nicely done. You even see that small counter skip to control the flare towards that deep of the green rough. Yeah, really good control there, and Katka looking to do the same here, just long off the basket, but uh, on the edge of the bullseye, as we see Birgit running it from 20 meters away, tells it left, but uh, she'll have to settle for the six there. Nicola now, also giving it a bid from circle to just a bit early on the hyzer fade. As they both go left side, they'll be left with short comebackers. Mariana putting in her five there. Yeah, five is really, as we said, not a bad score on this hole. You're not really losing strokes to the majority of the field. As uh, Nicola is trying to tap it in from just outside bullseye. That's a six, unfortunately, for her. But um, again, it's a very difficult hole. If you're going to take a double bogey on some hole, it... Uh, might as well be, be this one. I think this is definitely one of the harder on the front nine as we see Birgit also taking the double, getting caught up in that right side rough. Tough to progress and have efficient use of your shots. We see Katka now lining up her putt, making sure to go through her routine, very deliberate. And you can see just how well protected this green is. Katka being only four meters away from the basket, but already within a meter radius of her, there are some obstacles on the green. That's a very common thing on this course. Many greens are very full of obstacles. And we'll move forwards to hole six, a 102 par three, with an initial archway tunnel shot to fight through, 
ensuring that you absolutely have to throw nose up to battle over the high floor you then want a straight shot cresting over that fallen tree to this tucked away basket on the left it may look like a big hyzer but oftentimes the straight shot plays the nicest yeah this this hole plays incredibly long compared to the set distance of 102 um that's an impressive lefty shot going with a very understable disc flipping it through the gap and into the open field Mariano will have a great look to get the par from there and um Nicola also relying on the forehand there unfortunately fading towards the right side bushes which are very thick but if you're short of them as uh Nicola might be it's uh, very possible to go over them and to the basket and Birgit flipping this one up flat into the open. She'll be just pitching out over this fallen log now. And um, I think we missed Kotka's drive, but she was in the middle of the field throwing a great approach from there with a slow disc just dropping next to the basket. That was perfect display of touch. And not a particularly friendly hole for the left-handed players, but Katka doing well there to find her way up for a safe par. We see Birgit now opting for the hyzer over the fallen log. She hits the green nicely just outside bullseye. Good control of the pace and speed. And once again, you can just see how little skips you get on this course. The ground is very soft and the grass is thick, so these hyzer angle shots are really not going to skip very far. That's another good approach from Marianne there, utilizing the forehand. We see Nukula shaping underneath that log a soft anhyzer to fade towards the basket but get through the gap as cleanly as possible as we'll now be moving on to the green katka up first to get us started just outside bullseye very routine oriented player and i like the focus there's been quite a few discussions on the course about how the throws can be so demanding that when you miss a putt it can feel very bad almost worse than most other courses because you've given yourself the opportunity but you don't translate it a great throw takes a stroke just like a bad putt that's very true and um i think it's important to note that this course certainly punishes the throws way worse than the putts since most of the greens are relatively flat and they don't um skip very far if even if you miss your putt so you can easily feel that your putting is less important than throwing um, but it's still important to make those circle one putts. As we see Nicola there take her four, finding some struggles with the forehand tee shot fading into the rough. She scrambles her way to the green. We see here hole seven, a par four sitting at 137 meters, a fairly pure tunnel shot the entire way, playing slightly downhill. You have thick rough to the left and the right. No OB strokes to speak of, but you can quickly find a penalty if you are too deep there. A lot of players will need to control their height and flip something up, up to flat using some under stability to push the distance, but you have to make sure not to over or under turn it. I'd say the most common mistake players make here. Yeah, very true. And this is in fact the easiest hole on the course playing well under par and all of these players are certainly looking forward to getting the birdie on this hole. Mariano with a great drive and she only has about 40 meters left to the basket. That was perfect right down the middle and uh, keeping it on the fairway. And Katka also flipping it up to flat just perfectly. Hopefully it doesn't skip too much which it doesn't and she'll have an open look to the basket. She really puts her whole body into these tee shots, full commitment to the drive, contributing, I think, to her power off the tee. We see from Birgit a nice hyzer flip up to flat, catching some fade, maybe left with some awkward footing as she finds that small mound, but good enough distance to still likely have a standstill and pitch her way up. Yeah, it's not a very long shot from there, so uh, standstill will be just fine. As Nicola goes with a very understable disc, even after the hyzer release, turns over and stays perfectly in the fairway. That's uh, four good drives on this hole. And it is um, should be noted that's, that the whole fairway is quite wide, so that um, most players are very comfortable with throwing their faster drivers here. As we see Birgit landing just outside the circle, for the birdie 
Katka now looking for that hyzer as she swings it into the green right by the basket into bullseye solid control of the disc she'll be looking for her short birdie putt two good shots yeah that was a perfect shot from Kotka and uh, looking forward to getting her first birdie of the round after a bit of a bit of a slower start than yesterday yesterday she she was well under par at this point And we see Marianne here with a big jump putt approach, also right up into bullseye. Fantastic showcasing of the distance off the tee, allowing her a very simple stress-free approach. Birgit now from just outside the circle for birdie. Great putt. They're finding the left lower left pocket of the basket, spinning a half a circle around, uh, around the lower cage. And that was a very confident looking stroke. Had a lot of velocity on the disc. Lots of spin, as we see Nicola as well connect with her birdie putt. Strong performance on the green so far for our lead card. And as you mentioned, the easiest hole statistically for the FPO field, so definitely one that they do want to be attacking. Yeah, it looks like we might even get a potential star frame here. Expecting Marianne to tap it in from uh, inside the bullseye. That was really phenomenal play from our lead card here, showing off their control of the both of the drive and of the approach, really showing why it is the easiest hole on the course. They then continue to hole eight, a 162 meter par four with a very demanding tee shot through this tight tunneled archway, an incredibly low ceiling and shallow width requiring a perfect piercing shot Breaking out into this open field, you then dogleg softly first to the right. As you enter the second leg of the fairway, you navigate your way through these beautiful trees and thick roughs. You see that the basket, once you bend right, bends slowly back to the left where it is once again tucked away in a heavily guarded green. A common theme here, players will need a fantastic shot off the first pushing placement and distance, and on the second trying to fight through a series of tight gaps. This is a very stressful drive and I'm sure all of these players will be happy with anything that comes out of the gap and straight into the more open part of the fairway. Looks like Marianne throws a very powerful shot, keeps it low but just barely turns it to the left. Gets a great kick in the middle of the fair fairway though, so that's still well in position to get the, at least a par on this hole. We see Katka. Going a little bit high on the release, fights though to the end of the tunnel and likely still open enough to progress to the second half of the fairway. A four is a great score here, so players will not need to get too much distance. This is definitely more about placement if you're happy with a four. There's some great distance off the tee. That was a great showcase of that Estonian forehand power from Birgit. Really able to push the low ceiling and even get... Uh, above or um, further off the, the first landing zone of the fairway. Nicola, unfortunately, just turning the forehand over into the left. But uh, she has a lean out, another lean out forehand from here to hopefully get to the fairway. She also shows us a little bit of her power from an awkward stance off the knee, progresses very nicely up the fairway, finding one of those last trees to keep her in the middle. No rough for her next shot. As Kotka goes with the kneeling backhand shot from there, takes a big skip and is located in the middle of the fairway. That's a great shot. Marian uh, here just looking to hit the fairway and move, uh, move straight as far as possible. Unfortunately turning over just a bit to the left side and that's going to be tough. The left side rough is really not forgiving and... Um, She'll have a hard time to get to the basket from there. Birgit now playing this back door on the right side of the fairway. There are a few sneaky gaps that you can find if you go really far right, which she does as she hyzers back into that left side rough, likely a pitch out forehand Anheuser to battle her way to the green next. Katka shaping an Anheuser backhand beautifully through the fairway, even gets the slide to put herself up there in circle two, going for her putt. That was a great shot, but uh, unfortunately from circle two, you don't see many runs on this hole. As 
Nicola unfortunately hitting one of the first available trees from where she was. Now looking to turn a forehand over towards the green. But as I was saying, the green slopes behind the basket. So if you're short and thinking about running it from circle two, many players will opt to just lay it up since um, you can easily trickle into the further side of circle one if you miss it from short. And you see there some scrambling through the rough, even opting for the overhead shot from the woods here. I believe that was Mariana off that left side as she battles yeah. her way up to the green. Yeah, it was certainly Mariana with a left hand, forehand, um, hyzer shot. And Birgit just playing it smartly under the basket. Let's see if Katka gives it a run. Looks like a bit of a late release there, but settles just on the edge of the bullseye. This is a very difficult, this is actually the second most difficult hole on the course. So, As wow, what a Nicola, great there. She finds it from deep for the bogey save. Incredible confidence to go for that and incredible execution to put that one in. Yeah, completely unfazed by the slope away after the basket. Let's see if Marianne can get some of that same confidence. It was a very confident putt, but unfortunately just high left and falls out. Katka will have a short tap in for her bogey there. Slightly errant on that upshot, but no worries as she will take a five. Not too much damage done on one of the most difficult holes on the course. And Birgit as well with the five. Yeah, bogey is a very common score here as the hole average is almost a full stroke above the par four. So with a bogey, you're really not losing many strokes to the field. And our players will walk through the woods and then out of them as they arrive here on hole 9. Adjacent to the Drava River, this par 3 is 95 meters with a basket perched up on this mound with OB to the left just off the cliff. A very scary shot if you want to park it on top. A lot of players will opt for a big swinging hyzer if they have the power into the hillside or perhaps flipping it up to flat to try and push a touch more distance. This one is really not one you can fully run. A lot of players will err on the side of caution. Yeah, and it's a very long playing hole. Fortunately, we have some long throwers on the card. Marianne getting it pin high, but just fading quite far to the right of the basket. With the left hand, it is even slightly more difficult to get to the basket on this hole since you would have to play it over the hillside on the left and fade from the backside of the hill and uh, into the bank and very difficult on this hole to get it on top of the bank and uh, as we can see most of these players landing in the open field actually Birgit able to land it on top of the bank just uh, about 20 meters short of the basket but it's a significantly easier approach or a safer run if you want to run at the pot when you're already on top and you see the grass being slightly taller thicker more lush up on this mound is that also very fortunate to sit down, came in with a lot of heat and height, but caught up in that grass, does not find the fade that surely would have left them OB. They managed to keep it safe. We see Birgit up first, looking like deep circle two, perhaps just outside. She gives it the jump putt and nestles up nicely. I think a layup for a lot of players who don't find themselves in the circle off the tee. Yeah, it's absolutely a very smart layup, almost uh, no matter where you are. Many players have the rule of thumb on this hole that if you're outside the circle, you lay it up, and if you're inside the circle, you run it. And looks like uh, Marianne agrees from about 15 meters and puts it under the basket. Nicola with a great birdie look and puts it confidently in the middle from 10 meters away. She's really hot with the putter today. Incredible, and what a roller coaster for her on those last five holes, finding two holes at birdie and three at bogey or above she is just really playing those aggressive lines capitalizing when she can good performance by all of these players here on hole nine averaging for all of them just below par three pars one birdie and that's the end of the front nine thank you guys for watching we saw some exciting golf there some great highlights too absolutely some hot putters from this fpo lead card 
Taking a look at the top 10 standings, we see Mariana still holding that solo lead position at one under par. Katka sitting at that solo second at three over. Two players tied for third at six over. The battle will continue as we've reached the halfway point for this tournament. Make sure to catch us on the back nine to stay up to date. We appreciate you joining us. Elias, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Connor. Always a pleasure and see you on the back nine. Thank you.